Welcome back to the TV show. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger. Um, now let's just delve into the cover first because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration, and I actually like this illustration a lot. It's just kind of a photo of a, a bridge over a, oh, some water, some trees, a nice cloudy sky, very atmospheric. I like the colors of it. It's just a really well packaged book. Um, it's even got kind of this colorful little train track thing in the, in the, in the first page. Um, so anyway, who is William Kent Kruger and why the, did I decide to read one of his books? Well, I was looking at his 20 book series, um, his Cork O'Connor series that starts with Iron Lake. I think that's the first book in the series. I can't remember. But it's a, it's one of the more popular mystery series on the Barnes & Noble bookshelves. It's just, it's all of the, it's just there. And I've been eyeballing those books for, you know, 15, 12 to 15 years, just thinking, eventually maybe I'll read, read one. Well, before I decided, I thought I would read the standalone novel. This is not part of his, he's got a, about two standalone novels, this being one of them, and I thought I would just start with it and see if I like the guy's writing style, if I like this first, then maybe I would go ahead and get book one in the Cork O'Connor mystery series. These books are all set in Minnesota another reason I wanted to get. The only other author that I read that has books set in Minnesota is um, John Sanford, the, the Prey novels. Anyway, so I opened this up and I knew uh, within the first page that I was going to love this book. The writing was just epically poetic and gorgeous. The prose was just dripping with talent. I mean, his the guy writes an effortless you know, when I say C.J. Box writes effortless mysteries, this guy wrote an effortless book. And this is a bit of a mystery novel. I would compare this, just to get this out of the way, I would compare this book mostly to, if you enjoyed Stephen King's Stand By Me, or I guess it was The Body, that story, or if you enjoy anything that Stephen King writes about young kids coming of age, like they in the, in the book It, or even more importantly, if you enjoyed Robert McCammon's Boy's Life, this book is right up that alley, and it hits on all those fantastic notes that Stephen King and Robert McCammon hit on, just minus the supernatural stuff, okay? So the prologue just starts out with some dynamite writing. And I very rarely read out of the books, but I'm going to read this because I just absolutely think that this is gorgeous, 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 and so impactful. Just the opening scene. Okay, so. And this is told from the perspective of a 40-year-old man as he looks back upon his life as a child growing up in Aurora. And I don't know if it's Aurora... It, it might be Aurora. Uh, the Cork O'Connor series might take place in Aurora. No, this takes place in New Bremen, Minnesota in 1961. Okay. So uh, so not in Aurora. His Cork O'Connor books take place in Aurora. I need to Google those to see if those are actual real towns or not. But anyway, let's read this. So this is the 40-year-old man looking back on his youth. All the dying that summer began with the death of a child, a boy with golden hair and thick glasses, killed on the railroad tracks outside New Bremen, Minnesota, sliced into pieces by a thousand tons of steel speeding across the prairie toward South Dakota. His name was Bobby Cole. He was a sweet-looking kid, and by that I mean he had eyes that seemed full of dreaming and he wore a half-smile as if he was just about to understand something you'd spent an hour trying to explain to him. I should have known him better, been a better friend. He lived not far from my house and we were the same age, but he was two years behind me in school and might have been held back even more except for the kindness of certain teachers. He was a small kid, a simple child. No match at all for the diesel-fueled drive of a Union Pacific locomotive. It was a summer in which death in visitation assumed many forms. 
Accident, nature, suicide, murder. You might think I remember that summer as tragic. And I do, but not completely so. My father used to quote the Greek playwright Aeschylus. Euskiles. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that at all. But this is the quote. He who learns must suffer, and even in our sleep pain, which cannot forget, falls drop by drop upon the heart, until in our own despair, against our will, comes whispering through the awful grace of God. And in the end, maybe that's what the summer was about. I was no older than Bobby, and didn't understand such things. Even I've come four decades since then, but I'm not sure that even now I fully understand. I still spend a lot of time thinking about the events of that summer, about the terrible price of wisdom, the awful grace of God. Oh, great opening. Absolutely divine. And so what we've got here is a, a, you know, a man reflecting on his childhood and some tragic deaths that took place in the summer of 1961. And um, it starts out with, of course, the kid dying on the train track. Um, uh, very coming of age, small town mystery. Not unlike the books that I've described to you, McCabin, Stephen King. Frank is, uh, Frank Drum is 13. He is the um, one that's uh, doing the narrator. Uh, he's got a, uh, a brother named Jake who has a stutter. He's got a sister named Ariel who's got a face deformation, 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 deform. Her face is deformed. Um, his dad is a preacher. His mom is an aspiring writer. So that's the family, and we get to know all those characters and all of their weaknesses and strengths and how they just play off each other and things like that. Um, the uh, It's filled with just these mysteries trying to solve there's there's deaths some of them need to be solved there's a kind of an underlying mystery that goes through this but this the book is not about that the book is more of the coming of age tale about young boys you know out and about the small town spying on girls vandalizing cars um swimming at the stone quarry with teen girls um fighting bullies to impress the girls um, everything that this boy thinks about is girl related and it's very evident in this that you know he's just a young teen and um, all these things are swirling around him in this town and and uh, in his family and um, it's just the themes are about the, the thing just other than the absolutely gorgeous prose which seems to just flow effortlessly off the page this is about people who fix on giving God, because his father is a preacher, and so there's a lot of talk about tragedy and how God fits into tragedy. And people, and it's a, really about, the themes are about people who fixate on giving God 100% of the credit when good things happen in their life. Or when bad things happen in their life, they take it personally, like, I fucked up and God is punishing me for my evilness. And they, and, 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 and not just realizing that there's a lot of personal responsibility you can't just blame all the good you keep uh, on all the bad on god and him trying to punish you for your evilness and you can't blame all the good as a blessing from god you've got to take some personal responsibility for your triumphs and your own tragedies you and that's kind of the theme of this book is you know maybe when we talk about ordinary grace you know, in the prologue, we read, read about the awful grace of God. And I think that's what we're getting at here. Is the ordinary grace, um, the grace of the, that the Bible speaks of, the ordinary grace, which is the title. Um, or is it the awful grace of God? And some people that get this in their head, that God is, is watching them all the time. It just works with their psyche. And um, this is what is, these are the things that I drew out of this book. And... Uh, the characters really struggle with this. Um, the preacher man really struggles with it. His, he's he's um, downloaded all of this stuff into his children, you know, and um, his family. And then there's all these tragedies in the town. It's just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful piece of literary fiction. And it's just one of the better novels that I've read this year. And uh, I was riveted to every word, every page. It just it really, really reminded me of um even donna tart's uh what was that one the little friend 
Yeah, The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. That was, I think that's what the Donna Tartt book is called. Yeah, The Little Friend. It's over there on my shelf. The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. Stand By Me by Stephen King. This fits right up that alleyway. I give this a solid 10 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. 10 stars out of 10. Just one of the better things I've read. And I am absolutely 100% going to buy every single Court O'Connor mystery from this dude. So look, in fact, I am so excited about this book, I think I'm probably going to go to the bookstore right now and buy the first Court O'Connor and probably have a review of that one up pretty quick. Maybe even by tomorrow. Because I'll probably read the out of that today. Anyway, there we go.